people can be hurt or wounded emotionally wrong thoughts and wrong emotions can grip people's soul in this message we learn how to co-labor with god to administer healing and deliverance to wounded emotions and bring about inner wholeness all right let's turn the bibles to philemon the book of philemon that has only one chapter so i would say philemon chapter 1 we want to read verse 6 and then we're going to stand up and make our declaration uh philemon chapter 1 verse 6 it says here that the sharing of your faith may become effective by the acknowledgement of every good thing which is in you in Christ Jesus that the fellowship or the sharing of your faith may become effective so how can we have really good fellowship how can we really have effective fellowship and uh, uh, and really make it worth the while it says here by the acknowledging of every good thing which is in you in Christ so what is the bible teaching us what is and we could get into the context and 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 look at it but uh What are we encouraged here? What is Paul encouraging us to do? He says, "I want you to acknowledge the good things that are in you in Christ." Acknowledge means to recognize as a fact that yes it is so. Acknowledge the good things that are in you because you are in Christ. So because you are in Christ, what's in you? You are the righteousness of God. You've been justified by faith. You're more than a conqueror. You are an overcomer. Ah, uh, you are redeemed because you are in Christ. And there's a whole lot of there are about 144 scriptures in the New Testament that talk to us about who we are in. And the Bible says, acknowledge those things, recognize them as a fact, and that's the way we have good Christian fellowship. Acknowledge the good things that are in you. You recognize the good things that are in you because you are in. Christ you recognize the good things that are in your brother or your sister because they are in Christ that's how we have effective fellowship acknowledge the good things that are in you because you are in Christ i can do all things through Christ who strengthens me greater is he who is in me than he who is in the world see you got to talk like that acknowledge those things so when you're feeling afraid say no Yea, though I walk to the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, because the Lord is with. Acknowledge the good things that are in you, because you are in Christ. So let's stand up. We're going to make our declaration. We're going to acknowledge the good things that are in us, because we are in Christ. Hold your Bible high up in the air, and let's acknowledge. Let's say this bold, loud, and strong together. This is God's word. This is God speaking to me. I am who God says I am. I can do what God says I can do. I will become everything God has promised. I'm saved, healed, delivered, redeemed. I'm blessed, victorious, prosperous, triumphant. I'm a minister of God, a servant of Christ. and a channel of his blessing to many people i receive his word i believe his word and i live by his word christ is my master and to him i am in absolute surrender in jesus name amen god bless you, you may be seated please this past week uh, Thursday and Friday three of us were in Faridabad it's just a little outside of Delhi and uh, we did a two day conference there for pastors and Christian leaders on the house of God so this year we've been doing the house of God conference in different places and uh, basically trying to share with other pastors uh, what's God what God's been teaching us and about the local church not that we are experts but whatever we've learned we want to pass it on right uh trying to encourage others to raise up churches that uh follow God's blueprint and 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 have churches that can impact uh and influence the world around them 
and and so that's exciting, and we want to do that. And, uh, uh, but you know, uh, one of the things that we really want to work towards is to arrive at a place where many of us will go around the nation, ministering, pouring out what God has poured into us. Amen. We want you to go and minister across the land. Uh, there's, there's so much that needs to be done. In the, in the northern part of India especially, the southern part, there's a lot already happening. But up north, there's a great need. Across the states, at least 14, 15 North Indian states, it's a great need. And, uh, and uh, we want you to go. So as you come here Sunday after Sunday and you're receiving God's word and you're being empowered by the Holy Spirit and so on, I want you to start praying and saying, God, what can I do for your kingdom? You know, uh, you don't have to be a Bible college graduate to do that. God can use you. Amen? All that God's pouring inside you, you make yourself available, he'll go use, he'll use you. Just be ready to go. And I'm, I'm not sure if I should mention, but Anand Matthew sitting at the back there, uh, he, he, he's a businessman, uh, but he's traveled with us now. He was there with us again, Farid Abadim. He's traveled on several of these trips. And, and uh, you know, he's a businessman. He's busy. He's got all these things. But he's willing to come and, and just be available and see how God would use him. And, uh, and like that, I just want to encourage more of you uh, to be available. And we'll keep you informed of other trips that, uh, that keep coming on. And we'll go and, and just be available and let God use us. Amen? And we're going to see the young people go. I'm so glad, excited about what's coming up this week. And young people are going out to minister like that, all of us can go uh, and just be used by God across the nation. All right. Um, we're down to our last two Sundays. Hallelujah. <laughs> on the subject of ministering, healing, and deliverance. We've been on this subject now for almost three months. Uh, just dwelling on it, learning about it. And um, so we're here. Uh, this Sunday and next Sunday we'll be completing this. Uh, just learning how to minister healing and deliverance to people. Because there are people around us who are hurting, who need uh, healing and deliverance, and, and God's the healer. Uh, but we must learn to be co-workers with God on how to administer His healing and deliverance to people. And so we've spent a lot of time talking about that. Uh, this morning we'll be in chapter 12. So if you have these books, uh, please turn to chapter 12. We're in chapter 12. And this morning, we want to learn on how to minister emotional healing and wholeness. Uh, as we mentioned, or as we've been mentioning over several Sundays, um, there are physical problems. There are problems that are caused due to demonization, demonic powers, devils, and so on. Uh, we've, we've talked about these two areas, how to minister healing, physical healing, how to minister deliverance. And we also mentioned that people could be hurt emotionally. And uh, these three areas, physical, emotional, spiritual, are actually um, interconnected. And sometimes in order to bring physical healing, we may need to deal with their emotional aspect first. And when there is emotional healing, it will also help bring in the physical healing that they would need. And so this morning, we're going to talk about how to minister emotional healing and wholeness. That's in chapter 12. I'd encourage you to read this chapter in detail at home, study it, use it, use it during your personal time. We're just going to be doing a quick overview. I uh, hit up on the main points here uh, in this chapter. So let's talk about these emotional problems, wounds, hurts. What causes these? You know, why do, get, why do people get hurt emotionally? What causes these pains? And we've made mention of a few of them here in page 245. One, we talk about the family environment. Sometimes uh, our family environments can be quite hostile. Uh, people can, children can be growing up in, in, in environments where uh, um, uh, either parent or parents uh, mistreat them, speak the wrong things over their lives. Uh, sometimes uh, because of things happening, tensions in, the, in their parents' marriage, children are exposed to uh, uh, all kinds of things. Uh, and so these leave their mark uh, upon the emotional aspect of the child. Children get hurt. 
wounded. For example, if the dad always tells the son, you know, son or daughter, uh, you're good for nothing. You're such a big mistake. Or whatever, you know. And they speak the wrong things. And the child grows up hearing these wrong things. Even though they grow up into adulthood, they're going to carry these things with them. Or if the parent is very demanding, you know, the child comes home and says, Dad, I got 98 in math. Dad looks and says, why didn't you get 100? So, you know, the child is like never felt any appreciation and they always, you know, they feel like I, I can never meet my parents' expectations and, and, you know, some they could react in different ways. Some would just want to keep pushing, pushing, trying to reach that 100 and, and, um, and some would just give up. They just break under that expectation. So on the, and, and, and they carry so, so much of this into their adult life. To page 246, there could be other things that be, that cause hurts, emotional hurts. Uh, there could be cultivated habits, you know, things that people get involved in, uh, wrong things that they get involved in, and addictive behaviors, and, and so on. And they become sometimes uh, even personality traits, they're becoming very stubborn, very self-centered, and morally loose. There could be traumatic experiences in life. Uh, 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 and uh, uh, they go through trauma in life for whatever reason. Things happen, and, and uh, maybe uh, there's um, disappointment in relationships or tragedies happen, and, and these can leave. These can leave hurt and pain in people's lives. Or there could be emotional entanglements. They get emotionally involved with people and the wrong kinds of people, the wrong kinds of relationships, and, and really tears away at the emotional makeup, uh, the emotional fiber uh, of, of the person, and it's so hard to come out of those things. Um, what, what, what would be some of the symptoms? This is on page 247. What would be some of the symptoms? Now remember, this is headline news, right? So I'm just hitting on the headlines. <laughs> uh, just going through quickly. You can read in detail at home. Uh, withdrawal, for instance. People are, you're afraid to meet with others uh, because there's a deep sense of unworthiness. You, you know, uh, unwilling to go out there and meet with people. Be, and you're held back simply because of that deep sense uh, of unworthiness. Don't feel good about yourself. Um, or uh, anger, you feel victimized all the time. You know, somebody just just cuts across you on the street, and then immediately you pull pull them up. You know, and you demand for justice. You know, immediately, There's so much of anger. You know, it happens all the time. But man, they better not do it to you. You know, uh, there's anger. There's uh, there's a deep sense of right and wrong, and want demanding justice all the time. Or sometimes even, even inadequacy, a sense of uh, feeling inadequate. Uh, you know, your boss comes and says, man, you've been doing really well. I'd like to promote you. I'd like you to become the project leader. <gasps> oh, man, you get cold feet. Project lead, take on responsibility. I can't do that. Oh, no, I'm happy here. You're doing what I'm doing. And you stay there for the next 25 years. But uh, uh, you're unwilling to go up. Uh, take on responsibility. Why? Because of a deep sense of inadequacy, uh, which is really uh, uh, an emotional problem. Or extreme competitiveness. You know, like we said, the child that grows up in a home where 98 is not good enough and they always want to press uh, in to get that 100 to please their parents. You know, how do they behave when they grow up as an adult, as adults and come into the workplace? When they're in the workplace, man, they're competing with everybody else. You know, you talk about keeping information secure. They keep it, keep it double secure. They won't share it even with a team member. You know, because... They keep that information, privileged information, so that they want to outdo the other person, even on their team. They want to outdo. And so they're extremely competitive. There is no sense of teamwork. There is no sense of togetherness. They want to outdo everybody else. Why? Because of the way they grew up. And, and that's, what, that's what they were taught in their, in their entire life. And so this carries on into the workplace and, and the way they work with people on the team. And there's a, this thing. Or negative control. They could be very manipulative in their words. You know, be very look, very, you know, simple and all that on the outside. But the way they deal with people, they're very manipulative. They can use flattery. They can use, you know, all kinds of things to get their way around people. Uh, all kinds of things. You might, page 248, there's, uh, people, you know, there, there might be a desperate need for love and acceptance. Maybe they never received at home. Uh, dad never hugged her. 
uh, um, and, 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 or hug him and never give him love. And, not, and so when they grow up, there's this longing need to be loved, to be accepted. And, you know, it doesn't matter who comes by. And here, this guy could come, and I'm not making fun of this, but just, just to get the point. He, 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 this guy could come, you know, he could be wearing a mohawk, three rings on each ear, nose pierced, tongue pierced. I mean, like, and in his black suit, everything. Um, and, and, and he could be, his life could be totally a mess. But, you know, he looks at this girl and says, you're so beautiful. And that's it, man. That made her life. And then she goes out with him because he gave her the love and accept, acceptance that she never experienced at home. And she can't see that going with that guy is only going to ruin her life. She's totally blinded by that because of that deep sense of, of need for love and acceptance. And, and that's the problem. Uh, uh, there could be other things, other, other, other symptoms like difficulty with intimacy and always wanting approval and uh, other uh, deceptions uh, and so on. So, Wounded emotions uh, will sooner or later crop up in life and begin to affect our behavior, our perceptions of things, and even the decisions we make. They begin to influence all of this. Uh, Hurting people, you know, sometimes people think marriage is the great solution to all of this. (laughs) But you know, and we, we have one of the lessons here in the premarital course that, that deals with this. But, you know, marriage is not going to deal with that. You can carry it into your marriage and it will still impact the way you relate to your spouse. It's better to be healed emotionally before you get into your marriage. Marriage is not going to heal that. It's important. Keep that in mind. Hurting people hurt other people. When you're hurting a lot of that anger, that hurt, is usually taken out on the people closest to you. When our emotions rage, we do insane things. James 1 and verse 20 says, The wrath of man does not produce the righteousness of God. When you're angry, you lose it. And then you do all kinds of things and you feel so bad about it later. Wounded emotions actually cripple us. You know, there could be people who have great potential, great talent, great skill. But because of their wrong emotions and, and hurt and wound that they carry, they're unable to reach their full potential. And just holds them down, cripples them. And so we really need to deal with these things in life. Now let's talk a little bit about what's the relation between emotional problems and demonization. Some things that we need to know is that not all emotional problems are demonic. You know, just because somebody's struggling emotionally, is hurt or is wounded or, uh, or, or things like that, it doesn't mean they are uh, necessarily caused because of some sort of demonic influence. So we shouldn't jump to that conclusion. Not all problems, not all emotional problems are demonic in nature. Uh, but we do understand that demonization or some demonic influence can manifest as emotional problems. For example, somebody is always having a wandering mind. They, they're distracted. They can't concentrate. It could be that it's demonic influence. Or somebody is always having evil, lustful, unclean thoughts could be demonic. Sometimes depression, suicidal tendencies could be demonic. I'm not saying everything is, but it could be because there are demonic spirits that actually cause those kinds of things. And so we must be aware and also learn to minister at that level. Uh, Emotional problems, if not dealt with, could lead to demonization. So uh, demonic powers like to make use of already existing weaknesses. They like to take advantage of existing hurts and wounds and, uh, and wrong thinking and, 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 and use that in people's lives. So when people are hurt emotionally, they could open up uh, and give access to demonic work. And so we need to be aware of that as well. Page 250. So in trying to help people who have hurts, wounds, and are carrying these things, and uh, how do we work with them? How do we help them? There are two primary issues that we need to address. One is deception and the second one is wrong emotion. Deception simply means that they are believing a lie. It's just wrong thinking. So we need to help deal with deceptions. For example, 
um, somebody's gone through a very tragic situation in life and then because of that, they believe or they come to believe that God never cares. So they carry that in their mind. God doesn't really care. How could God let something like this happen to me in life? So that's wrong thinking. It's deception because that's not biblical. So they carry that thought with them and it's, it's, it's ingrained in them. And then uh, everything they do begins to stem up. My God, God doesn't really care for me. He might care for other person. He care for that person, not me. That's wrong thinking. That's deception. So like that, there could be so many other areas. So you, you know, maybe they grew up in a home where they had a very abusive father. So now you come and tell them, God is your father. So man, I want to run a mile away from God if he's a father. You know? Because... For them, their understanding of father is what they experience at home. And when you tell them God is a love, is a father, oh no. <laughs> wrong, uh, it's a wrong picture. It's a wrong, it's a deception. It's a wrong thinking that grips them. So, at the root of every emotional problem is a wrong thought, a wrong, a wrong thinking that's led to where they are. And how do we um, identify? And, and this lie then influences their choices and behavior and reactions and so on. So how would you identify a lie? Page 251. Of course, a lie contradicts the word of God. It contradicts the truth of God's word. And a lie, although promising freedom, actually holds the person in bondage. It enslaves the person. And, uh, and, and they are held captive by it. They're in bondage to it. But the good news, page 252, 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verses 3 to 6, is that God has given us weapons. He's given us uh, spiritual weapons through which we can pull down strongholds. We can cast down reasonings and imaginations. And we can take every thought captive to the obedience of Christ. So we've got what it takes to dismantle that deception that's in the minds of people. We've got those weapons. Secondly, is wrong emotions. The second problem we're dealing with is wrong emotions. That means they are harboring, they are carrying wrong emotions inside them. And that's the second thing we need to deal with. Now, <clears throat> while there could be many wrong emotions, we just listed two of the common ones, which is unforgiveness and lust. Unforgiveness, unable to forgive God, forgive ourselves, or forgive others. Unforgiveness. And how could God, if He is a good God, ever allow such a thing to happen to me? You know, maybe they've gone through, you know, a financial loss, or uh, you know, something traumatic happened in their life, and they are unable to forgive God. They hold God responsible. God's got to pay for this someday. And until he does, I'm not going to let him go, you know. The whole God response is this anger towards God. Sometimes there's unforgiveness towards themselves. They can't forgive themselves. You know, we all make mistakes. And we all learn to get over it and keep move on. But in some cases, people are unable to forgive themselves. How could I have done such a thing? And for the rest of their life, they are just angry with themselves. Not able to forgive themselves. How could I ever do such a thing? Or sometimes they're unable to forgive others. How could he or should she do such a thing to me? Maybe it's you know a parent, somebody else, and for the rest of their life they carry that wrong emotion of unforgiveness towards that person. So unforgiveness is a it's a wrong emotion that they're carrying inside them. And 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 you know. The biggest problem with unforgiveness, and, and, and let me just make this, uh, you know, the Lord taught us, this on page 253, through many, many, in many different ways, the importance of releasing forgiveness, even as we receive forgiveness. He taught us over and over again. You know, Matthew 6, 12, he, in the Lord's prayer, he teaches us, you know, forgive us our sins as we forgive those who have sinned against us. He teaches us that. And uh, he gave us this, um, uh, this example in Matthew 18 of, uh, of this man who, you know, he owed a large sum of money and uh, his, his boss forgave him. Uh, but then 
when somebody subordinate to him owed him a little money he was unwilling to forgive and he had that person apprehended and put in prison and the lord and then his boss came and heard of it and said no you cannot do that you've got to learn to release forgiveness just as much as you've received forgiveness so jesus taught us over and over again the importance of forgiveness now here's what i wanted to say you know god provided for us to be forgiven of our sins even while we were still sinners while we were still sinners christ died for us so god is not withholding forgiveness from us the point is i can only experience the fullness of his forgiveness working in my life when i release forgiveness to somebody because when i am forgiven it's salvation it's joy it's healing it's deliverance it's everything but i can only experience a fullness of god's forgiveness working in me when i'm able to when i release forgiveness to somebody it's not that god is not willing to forgive me he paid for it even before, while i was a sinner he's more than willing to forgive but only to the extent that i release forgiveness to others can i enjoy the fullness of his forgiveness working in my life for me personally amen see that's why you may have you and i may you know uh see believers that yes they they know the blood of jesus christ god's son has cleansed me from all sin but yet they're not enjoying the fullness of that why because they themselves are carrying on forgiveness in their hearts towards somebody else or towards god or maybe towards themselves and so that's a wrong emotion that that people could carry in and they need to learn to let go or page 255 the other common wrong emotion is lust which is uncontrolled passion the ungodly affections the desire for wrong things unclean desires that control people and 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 when they when people carry the this lust this uncontrolled passion uh, it leads to all kinds of things addictive behaviors jealousy extreme competitiveness and all kinds of things and the root cause is they carrying this uncontrolled desire for something i'm not saying we should be void of any desire we, we all have desire we have goals we have things that we are pursuing uh but anything is uncontrolled is ungodly and can cause harm page 257 the good news is this that there is god's healing balm for emotional wholeness the cross the word of god and the work of the holy spirit that's god's healing balm god can heal psalm 23 verse 3 he restores my god is our restorer so no matter what the hurt no matter how deep the pain no matter what the problem there is someone who can heal and make oh he restores our so so when you all raise your hands up say this with me he restores my soul he restores my soul he makes me whole amen there is a god who can heal us no matter what we've all been through he can make us whole he can release us from all the hurt the pain whatever we've gone through in life he can make us whole and that's the beautiful thing how does he do it through the cross when jesus died on the cross he died to make us whole isaiah 53 and verse 5 says the chastisement for our peace was upon him that means the punishment for our peace the word peace there is shalom which is wholeness the punishment to bring us wholeness was upon him so the punishment he bore brings wholeness to our lives including emotional wholeness the cross the word of god which is the truth is god's uh, is the truth this place is the lie is it dislocates this wrong thinking it dislocates this deception and breaks the power of deception over our minds and so the truth of god's word penetrating our hearts and our minds sets us free and the work of the holy spirit is the holy spirit who can reach down into the deepest parts of our soul and bring healing amen he can bring strength he can bring wholeness he can do the work and so the cross the word of god 
and the work of the Holy Spirit. God works through this to bring wholeness to our lives. I want to jump to page 260 and 261 now as I get ready to conclude here. So how do we help people receive emotional healing and wholeness? This is on page 261. We've listed some uh, uh, some things that we can do here. And so, you know, when you find people who are hurting, then here are the things you can do to bring healing and wholeness to them emotionally. Because the first one is this. Help the person recognize that there is a problem and uh, to be willing to seek for help. That's important. But uh, you know, there's, there's a problem here. You know, we all lose our temper, but if somebody's losing the temper seven times a day, got a problem. You know, got to deal with it. Now, if, uh, 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 and like this, you, you see these symptoms, and then, so look, there is a problem. Let's talk about it. We need to address it. Uh, we need to let God do his work here. So, I help the person recognize it. Secondly, help them embrace the standard and the truth of God's word. That means say, look, here's the emotion you're carrying, but here's what the word of God says. Your unforgiveness, this is what the Bible says. For anger, this is what the Bible says. For jealousy, this is what the Bible says. For lust, this is what the Bible says. Whatever. See the truth of God's word. This is what the Bible says. Because it's the truth of God's word that's going to dislocate the wrong thinking that's going on in their minds. Third, lead the person to renounce the effect of the lies, the wrong thinking, and to acknowledge the truth of God's word. So if they are believing that I am worthless, and you say, no, you stop thinking like that, because here is God's price for you. He gave his only son. See how much you're worth. So they say, like, God never cares for me. No. The Bible says, if God will not, will not hold back his only son from me, how much more will he give you everything else? God cares. Right? So help them renounce that negative thing they're believing in and, and, and embrace the truth of the word. So you lead them through a simple prayer. And you say, in the name of Jesus, I renounce this wrong thought, this wrong idea in my mind. I discard it. And I believe the truth of God's word. And this is what I am. This is what the Bible says. This is what I will do. So you lead them through a simple prayer to renounce the lie, to embrace the truth. And then... Step, the fourth thing we do is we lead the, per, um, we, uh, we pray with a person, uh, if there's a need here, to break any demonic influence over their lives. Now, sometimes the, that, that, that grip of that lie or the grip of that wrong emotion can be so strong over them, they find it, un, they find it unable to do it, unable to let go. And many times it's because it's demonically empowered. And so you need to break that off. So you pray with them and say, in the name of Jesus, I break off. Uh, any demonic influence over this lie and this wrong emotion that's in this person, and break it off. So you pray. You're ministering deliverance. You have the authority to do it. You break it, right? Or whether you're going through depression or uh, any suicidal tendencies, whatever it is, these things could be demonically empowered. And so you come in there in the name of Jesus, by the power of the Holy Spirit, you break off any demonic influence that might be causing these things over their lives. Number five, you lead the person to renounce any wrong emotion that they, that they are harboring. So now is where they let go of the wrong emotion. So if they are uh, have, carrying unforgiveness, they say, Father, I pray in Jesus' name and I release, I just re- let go of this unforgiveness towards so and so. And I, and I just release forgiveness. And I, I release love. I let love flow through me to that person. So you lead them through that prayer of re- letting go of that wrong emotion, discarding that wrong emotion from their life. Number six, you welcome God, the work of God's Spirit. You say, Holy Spirit, come. Touch this person in the innermost part where they are hurting, where they're having pain. Come and bring healing. So, you know, as human beings, we can't go in there, but the Holy Spirit can. He can bring healing. He can, in a moment, release them. And many times it happens even during worship, even as we are worshiping, just waiting on the Lord. His presence comes and releases us from all kinds of things that we've been carrying. That's why it's so beautiful just to be in the presence of God because the Holy Spirit does a deep work 
uh, in our soul, bringing healing. Seven, encourage the person to consistently renew their mind with the word of God. So now they have to retrain their thinking. They have to consi- train themselves to consistently think according to the truth. Because all this while they've been thinking the wrong thing. They've been believing the lie. But now you teach them. See, you've got to change that thinking. You've got to believe the truth. You've got to always um, meditate in the word. Renew your mind to this truth. Think in line with the word of God. So encourage them. Teach them. Show them how to do that. And uh, number eight, you encourage a p- person to walk through this path day by day. They may need to get rid of any wrong influences around their lives. People or company that they're keeping that's influencing the wrong way. They may need to come out of it. Sometimes amputation is necessary to get rid of the wrong things. Now Jesus said if your right hand causes you to sin, cut it off. Now he's not talking about literally, but the fact is uh, that's the kind of severity with which you need to deal with things that are causing sin in your life. So you may need to encourage them to come out of wrong company or things that are pushing them in the wrong direction. Get that cleaned out so that they can walk their journey into wholeness. In closing, I just want to mention these few things in page 263. Some of the things we need to help people make their journey into emotional wholeness is to continue renewing their mind, open up to the work of the Holy Spirit continuously. Positive declarations, keep speaking positive. Keep speaking the truth of the word. Always acknowledge the good things that are in you, that are in Christ Jesus. Choose the power of positive influence. Stay around believers who will help you, will nurture you in the faith. They will lift you up to higher levels. Somehow, sometimes people need to develop uh, basic skills, emotional skills and disciplines. And we tell them to keep a watch on their progress so um, they can uh, come to complete wholeness. Psalm 142, verse 7, the psalmist prays a simple prayer. Bring my soul out of prison that I may praise your name. Bring my soul, my mind, my will, my emotions. Bring me out of prison so that I can praise your name. God is a restorer of the soul. Amen? And he can work through you and me to help people come to a place of emotional well-being, of emotional wholeness. And if you and I will just take these things, the cross, the word of God, the work of the Holy Spirit, Make ourselves available. We could be a blessing to hurting people around us. Amen? So stay open. There might be somebody who needs help. And you could be the person that God would use to bring healing into their life. Let's rise to our feet. I call our worship team up, please. We're going to spend a few moments here. As we stand in God's presence this morning, there could be some of us standing here who need the touch of the Lord upon our lives to bring healing, to bring wholeness into our own lives. Or maybe just the strength, the emotional strength that we need. Maybe just a renewing of our own emotions. Be strong to press forward. Overcoming of things that seem to cripple us emotionally. We're going to take some time right now just to let the Lord do that for us. Right where you are is just standing. If you would just take some time to pray and say, God, I'm struggling with these things. Maybe you recognize some wrong thinking, you know, some thinking that is not appropriate. It's not right. It's not lined up with the word of God. Why don't you pray and just say, God, I recognize this wrong thinking that I've permitted to go on in my mind but right now as I stand here this morning I renounce these wrong thoughts and I just embrace what the Bible says what the word of God says or maybe it's wrong emotions that you you've permitted to remain inside you that are harboring inside you whatever it might be anger bitterness and forgiveness lust what will you feel Will you recognize? Maybe it's this fear. Maybe it's, in some cases, 
a crippling fear, an unwillingness to step out and, and do what you know God's calling you to do, whatever it might be, would you just release that emotion to God right now and say, God, for some reason I've just permitted this kind of feeling just to hold me down, but I'm releasing it this morning. I'm asking you, Holy Spirit, to come and fill me with, with the kinds of emotions you bring, love, joy, peace, kindness, meekness, goodness, gentleness, self-control, faith. Fill me with those kinds of things. Come, Holy Spirit, do your work. Father, even as we stand here this morning, each one of us, you know our hearts, you know our minds. And we just ask you, Lord, to bring healing when there is needed for healing. Bring release, O oh God. But there's need to be released from wrong emotions and wrong thinking. Do your work in our lives, we pray, even as we stand before you, loving Father. Come. Father, we just pray that by the power of your word, by the power of your spirit, that there will be healing, God, to our deepest wounds, hurts, and pains, that you will bring healing, bring release, 
I pray that each one of us will walk in emotional wholeness and strength and, and overcome anything that cripples us, O oh God. And walk in victory by your word and by your spirit. And thank you, Father. Thank you. We bless you, God. We bless you. We honor you, God. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Let's close, please. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. The love of God. And the fellowship of the Holy Spirit. Be with each one of us. This day. And every day following. In Jesus name. Amen. Amen. God bless you. Go be a blessing. Amen. We trust that this message was a blessing to you. We'd love to hear from you. You can email us at contact at apcwo.org. Also, visit our website www.apcwo.org for additional resources. Thank you for listening and God bless you.